My name is Rebecca Horwitt. I'm a paleo illustrator. I always enjoyed paleo ever since I was a kid. And uh, if you finished all your, your work, you could get a golden book off the shelf. And there was one on dinosaur extinctions. And I loved it. I always thought that I would become a paleontologist. Instead, I married one, Peter Wilf. He's a professor of geosciences at Penn State. He works mostly on fossil plants and plant-insect interactions. And over time, we've kind of developed a collaboration where he writes a paper and we come up with an illustration. This is a, an illustration from after the age of dinosaurs, early in the age of mammals. This is a place where Peter works. It's called Laguna de Lunco. It doesn't look like that now. Today, it's a, a vast, high desert, very cold, very dry. Um, but in the Eocene, it would have been a lush volcanic crater lake just filling up with fossils. This one takes you back to the age of dinosaurs. That's a Parasaurolophus. They used to be reconstructed standing up. Now, now most people think that they were primarily quadrupedal. When reptiles were just starting to, some of them were starting to evolve in the direction of becoming mammals. And the, the ch interesting challenge with this little guy, who's called Thrinaxodon, was to make him look enough like a mammal that he would be identifiable as some sort of mammal-like kin, and enough like a reptile that he still doesn't, doesn't leave his reptilian origins. And uh, so that's why he has kind of scaly, scaly forelimbs and a hairy body. So this shows a Triceratops. Early reconstructions show them with very low, sprawling, almost crocodilian postures in their legs. And more recently, there have been reconstructions that show them with a really high and upright gait, almost like a, a horse or a cow. This is in between the two extremes, and it's called the high sprawl. And there aren't too many illustrations that show the high sprawl, so I'm fond of this one. Most people know that the age of dinosaurs ends with a tremendous meteor impact. Insects survived while a lot of other things didn't. Insects suffered a, a major extinction, but they didn't fare as badly as the dinosaurs, which everybody already knows. This one is a T-Rex wandering through a burning end Cretaceous forest. This is a very, very, very bad day for this guy. Um, this is the end of his world, and he probably doesn't really know it. Here we see another cover submission showing two views of the uh, Cretaceous extinction. On the left is pre-extinction. Uh, Hadrosaur is grazing in a Cretaceous river with lush vegetation in the background. On the right is the post-Cretaceous with a burned floodplain, burned forests, dinosaur bones. And in the middle, you have uh, Erlingdorfia, my favorite Cretaceous plant, with a large, fat, happy moth sitting on it. And this was kind of an attempt to show how insects crossed the boundary. Insects didn't get off scot-free, but they didn't go extinct, as anyone who's been outside on a buggy summer evening can attest.